This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. I'm Mike Keith, and this is the man of the hour, Brian Callahan, new head coach of the Tennessee Titans. We know for sure that it is Brian Callahan because in Cincinnati, you were often mistaken for Dan Pitcher, the quarterback coach, or Dan Pitcher was mistaken for you, and this was a pretty regular thing? It became a regular thing, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, Dan and I do look very similar, and uh, I could see how the mistake could be made. But, uh, yeah, there was lots of pictures that weren't me uh, on the <laughs> Internet. So I, uh, I, Dan and I got to joke about it. And every time one would pop up, i send it to him. And uh, a lot of people were joking that they that the Titans didn't, they thought they were hiring Dan and they hired me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's been a, and then the, the, the Bengals fans on Twitter started posting just random pictures of people saying it was me, like Denzel Washington, or, <laughs> like, you know, just random pictures that, uh, that obviously were not me. So it became a little bit of a, a bit as it went along. You had a lot of fun in Cincinnati, didn't you? Yeah, we won a lot of games. Um, that's usually a starting point. Sure. Um, but man, just awesome, awesome players to be around. Great people in the building. Um, and, and, you know, you, you add that to the success that we had on the field, um, the response from the fan base, the, I mean, the, the way the stadium looked when we were 0 and 11 in 2019, it was about 6,000 people there to, uh, we striped the jungle on Monday night when we, we striped there. I mean, organically, I mean, it was not a, they didn't hand anything out. They just asked everyone in each section to wear colors and the whole thing looked unbelievable on TV. Just that environment on game day from what it was, uh, to what it became. Uh, was really cool process to be a part of, but it was, it was fun. Is and there anything better in sports than when it just gets rolling? There's nothing better in sports. <laughs> it's, um, and then especially when you're you're with people you like being with, and that that was the key in Cincinnati to me for our success is that a bunch of guys that like being together, coaches, players, um, great relationships across the board, and so you add that and you throw some success in it and, it and it explodes. And it's the most fun I've probably, you know, I've had, had it happen one other time like that in Denver and I'm looking to replicate it. So Dave McGinnis does color commentary with yeah. me on Titans radio. Yeah. Uh, he knew Zach Taylor and his brother press when they were little, kind of like your son <laughs> yeah. Ronan about yeah. five, six years old. And he always told us, he said, you know, Zach is going to be something really special yeah. as a head coach. So impressed, not just with the offensive mind, but with him as the overall head coach. What made him successful in that way? You know, he had a great, he had a great vision for what he wanted, and he never wavered from it, um, which I thought was really impressive. Uh, he, wanted, he wanted it to be uh, a building full of great people, um, a place that everyone wanted to come to work every day and were excited about walking in the building, um, and that goes a long way. And he never, even when it was a little bit lean those first couple of years, um, he never wavered from what he thought it could be. And everyone felt that. Um, they felt that, that he was determined to make it exactly what he envisioned it to be. And I think that um, his consistency, his demeanor, um, he's an unbelievable leader and not in the way that people would think. And I think that that's what made it really special for me is that I saw a guy who's a peer of mine and a friend of mine, um, be himself. And it worked unbelievable. And that's a huge lesson to take from it. It's just, I'm gonna be me. And, and it's gonna work because of that, not because I'm trying to do something different or be somebody that I'm not. And um, Zach's ability to do that over the course of five years, I mean, there's not, you can't find anybody that doesn't have anything good to say about Zach. A locker room senses it when a coach is not being genuine, a head coach is not being genuine. Immediately. Immediately, and it's um, they know they're they're gauging you on whether they want to buy in or not. And if you if you don't seem genuine, uh, if they don't feel that you have their best interest, that you care about them, um, they tend to to question it. And then the minute things don't go well, um, they bail on it. And so the 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 hope is they buy into the vision. They they believe that I am authentically who I say I am. I act the way that I say I'll act. Uh, we build great relationships together. Um, and then when things get tough, because they do in the NFL all the time, uh, that's when you're leaning on the locker room and the culture to band together 
Um, that's when you see culture, in my opinion, is when things are hard. Um, and I think this year in Cincinnati, you saw that things got hard. We lost our quarterback, uh, but nothing changed. We still were competitive. We still won games. Um, and that, to me, is a better testament of culture when things are difficult as opposed to when things are just smooth and sailing right along. Um, and that's what you hope to build because you have a bunch of guys that trust each other, believe in each other, um, and want to be a part of that process and be a part of a team uh, as opposed to just worrying about themselves. What is the aspect of being a head coach that you are most excited about? Oh, that's a great question. All of it, really. Um, just the chance, because I've believed that I've been capable. I've believed in my abilities um, to lead a group of people, to connect with a group of people. Um, and I think that there's an organization here that feels exactly the same from top to bottom, and that's exciting to me. Uh, but that that uh, that role where I can be the one out front, um, that I can help bring people together, help connect the team, uh, that's exciting to me. That's what coaching is. It's, it's building those relationships. Um, it's helping develop people, young players, veteran players, uh, and and being kind of in the in the process of the one that's that's in charge of it. Like that's cool to me. I can't wait to do that. So um, I don't know. If that's a good answer, but. What do you expect to be the biggest challenge for you moving from offensive coordinator to head coach in the NFL? Uh, from everything I've heard, time. Um, there's just a lot of people over the course of a day that want a piece of your time. Um, and it might be five minutes, it might be 30 minutes, it might be three hours, but uh, people want your time a lot more than they used to want your time. I could sit in my office and no one would bother me for most of the day as an offensive coordinator and that, that's gonna change. Um, but I also think People have, that have done this before have given the advice that the, the, even the ones that do come in and need five minutes of your time, that's the most important five minutes of their day. And so to be present and engage and listen to what those people have to say, whether I think it's significant to what I'm doing in the moment or not, uh, really goes a long way. And so I thought that was great advice that was, that was given to me about that, is that uh, your time is your biggest, your biggest challenge. Got more with Coach Callahan in a second, but need to remind Titans fans, it's always game on with Duncan. So grab a coffee and kick off the action, whether that's a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before watching the game at home. Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, we need to be at our best come game time, which is why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual, because it's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. Everyone knows your dad's Bill, H Bill Callahan, head coach of the Oakland Raiders, head coach at Nebraska. What's the best advice that he has given you about becoming a head coach? Uh, as a head coach, um, probably, uh, there's a lot. Uh, I'm trying to siphon through it all. Um, the one that's always resonated with the most is, is he's said the same thing, and, I, and, I, and I've said it already, but it's just be, be you, be who you are. Um, don't try to be me, as my dad telling me, don't try to be your dad, just be who you are, um, and that's gonna be plenty good enough. And um, that's always resonated with me in a, my whole life. Your dad's something else, 40 plus years as a coach, 24 years in the NFL. He is a coach's coach, much like our own Dave McGinnis. He's one of those guys that everywhere your dad walks in, they're like, Bill Callahan, whoa, you know, that's a, that's a guy. Um, as you, as you go through and, and know that, people have wondered when he was with the Raiders, you were just finishing high school, but when he went to Nebraska, you were finishing UCLA, you didn't go with him. No. You wanted to make your own way, yeah. and you have chosen to do that all the way through from being a GA to being a high school coach to working your way up through the NFL. Why? Well, he, he, I had the opportunity as I was finishing playing at UCLA, I could, the head coach at the time, Carl Durrell, came to me and said, we have a graduate assistant spot open. We would love it if you wanted to take it. And I was like, yeah, I think that's probably where my, my football dreams are probably been realized uh, to the degree that I could realize them. And so uh, I said, this is probably the next good step. And to me, I was like, well, I can get a master's at UCLA. Great. And we'll see if I like coaching. But to me, I just wanted to get the master's and and just see how coaching was. Uh, my dad also had a spot open for me at the same time. And, and he said, um, I said, I kind of want to come work for you. I just, I love being around my dad. So sure. I wanted to be. And uh, he said, I, I think you should consider staying at UCLA. And his reasoning was, he goes, I don't want to be the one um, to give you your first job. 
I don't want to be the one that's always giving you a job. I want you to go earn your own way. And he goes, you've invested at UCLA. You've been, you've been there for, for four years. They know you. They want you there. Um, I, he says, I, I, I suggest that you do that um, instead of coming here to Nebraska. And um, that was probably the best advice he could have given me in my career in that moment because um, even though my last name and my dad is who he is and it's helped me over my career, uh, my dad never gave me a job. And when I was out of work, he never hired me. Um, I've had to earn it. I've had to earn it the way that everybody else has had to go through it. Um, I appreciate that. I'm better for it. And um, that was really the, uh, a critical advice at a juncture in my career where all of a sudden everyone looks at me like my dad just gave me a job and they don't respect my journey. Where right now I, I did it my own way. I did it my own path. Um, and I think people respect that. Yeah. Your name means something to you because yeah. of what he's done. But it's not the only reason you're sitting here today, right. the 20th head coach of the Tennessee Titans. That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah it, it's it. I've appreciated it more the years as the years have gone on. I've appreciated it even more, uh, just because of the reputation of, of coaching and and coaches and coaches' kids and all that stuff. But uh, you know, it's the only life I've ever known, uh, and so it's a natural fit. Was a natural fit for me. Uh, but to, I'm very proud of the fact that. I've, I've had to do it my way, and I've been very fortunate. Things have sort of worked out the way they've worked out, uh, but it was because of the, the work that I had to put in to get here, and I think that that means a lot. We know the impact of Bill Callahan on your life, mm -hmm. but you have two sisters. I do. Your mom certainly knows ball from her background, yeah. having lived with a coach her life. Allison has been your wife for over 10 years yeah. now, and she understands the NFL and understands being a coach's wife. What have those women added yeah. to what you bring here today as the head coach of the Tennessee yeah, Titans? Yeah, they've, they've, you know, my, I look at my sisters a lot because they lived, you know, we grew up differently, even though we grew up in the same family because, you know, I was, my dad was younger. They grew up with, they grew up with my dad as a head coach, which I did, I, I did not grow up that way. So they, they grew up with them in the spotlight. They had a much harder time than I did growing up in terms of the attention that my dad received, both positive and negative. Um, they had to move in high school. I did not have to do that. And so the amount of respect I have for them in this coaching journey and how resilient they've been um, and how much they've had to find, they've had to find their own way too because as, a, as a, a son of a coach, I get to go be in the locker room and be around my dad. And it's harder for the, the girls to be around the process. And so it's much more open now than it ever was, which is phenomenal. Um, but their ability to overcome and um, deal with the, the ups and downs of coaching is, is really where I've, you know, I have a ton of respect for, for that that they've had to go through. Um, so they're pretty incredible. I hope you guys all get to meet them. But, um, yeah, my sisters are, are they're, they're incredible human beings, and, and they, uh, because of the journey they've had to go through, you know, moving and being all over the country and all that, they've, um, they've turned into pretty awesome people. Your mom must be pretty tough. Oh yeah, there's nobody tougher. Um, <laughs> you know, raising four kids essentially on her own for large parts of time, uh, just because my dad worked the way that coaching requires you to work. And sure. uh, yeah, she is. I'm having my own two children. I marvel at how she managed four, um, how she managed to get everybody. We played ice hockey, so we were getting up at five in the morning and driving two hours to go play. While my sisters were in the back seat, and she's dragging us all over Wisconsin when we were kids and. Um, I just look at it now and I'm like, I can't believe you did what you did uh, and you, you turned out four really pretty awesome kids and, and it's, it's remarkable, really. I mean, I, I don't know how she did it. All right, so thinking about your dad and your mom and your family, I think about January 19th, 2003, mm -hmm. AFC Championship game. Yeah. Oakland against Tennessee. Yeah. Oakland wins 41 to 24. Yep. We fumbled twice before halftime. It's just kind of anyway. Um, <laughs> still not quite over it. I understand. Uh, Trust yeah, me. I, I get that. Yeah. Um, where were you that day? I was there in the stadium. I was probably sitting in. Uh, I don't know, where were we? Two two fourteen or two fifteen? Right there in the Oakland. You're Coliseum. eighteen at that point. Yeah, I was a senior in high school. Um, I might have been a freshman in college. Either way. I remember being there, and we were sitting. We were sitting up in the in the box. I'm way wrong. We were up in the, the coach's head coach's box, and I was there with a couple of my friends from college. Uh, I was right. I right in my freshman year. Um, 
that was a really, really cool moment for me to watch my dad uh, host the AF, the Lamar Hunt Trophy. He's got Jerry Rice sitting next to him. Um, LL Cool J did halftime. Did that's one hundred percent right. He did. Uh, yeah, that was a what a cool memory as a coach's kid. Like to be, I remember being on the field. I used to love going on the field in pregame uh, to see and hear, and you'd feel the energy in the stadium. And like playoff games are different, and even as a coach, you feel it. But the playoff energy is so different, so intense, and like especially a place like Oakland, it's just it's a raucous crowd to begin with. And um, I just remember it was so loud. I'd had a, I had a Gatorade cup, and I was just drinking Gatorade and I'd finished it but it was right at kickoff I used to wait until kickoff so I could see the kickoff team run down because I just was always like this is amazing how fast these guys are and uh right after national anthem the place is going crazy they're beginning ready to kick the ball off and the cup in my hand was vibrating and I'll, I'll never forget it like because it was so loud the sound was vibrating the cup in my hand uh and I was like this is what football is supposed to be about you know uh, but yeah what a what an unbelievable day that was for us now that was great. The Titans. Now you need to say, what a horrible day. It was horrible. Yeah, it was yeah. awful, Jack. Yeah. Um, why call your own plays? Um, a lot of reasons. Uh, one, I like being involved um, in the process. Uh, that's part of what makes football fun for me is the, is the solving the problems. Um, two, in today's NFL, everyone's always looking for the next offensive coach. And so uh, just like just what happened to Zach in Cincinnati, I've left um, and nothing changes for Joe Burrow. The, the system's going to stay the same. No matter who you hire, uh, the voice to the quarterback is consistent. And the dream is that, that Will and I have a partnership for the next 10 years. Uh, and he's the person that he, I hear him every Sunday for the next 10 years. He hears me. The system doesn't change. The verbiage is the same. So the quarterback has a chance to master an offense. Um, and I think that that's important because outside of the, the ownership, the GM and myself, the next most important relationship in the building is me and him. And um, it's hard to foster that relationship without being involved in the process. And so um, I believe in that. I've seen it work. You see coaches run the league doing it. But um, that's the biggest reason why. Is that one, I love doing it. Um, and two, there's, a, there's another part of that process where we want the system to stay the same and we don't want to lose it. Brian, one of the first questions you got in your press conference was about Will. Yeah. About Will Levis. And had you – I know you didn't need a quarterback because you got Joe Burrow, yeah. but had you done much yeah. work on him? So you were you were aware of I was very familiar, very aware. You know, I watch all the quarterbacks every year just to know because, you know, you never know how guys shake out. If you – we didn't need one, obviously, but you just – awareness of the sure. quarterbacks is good because you're going to probably have to play them. Um, and so I saw he's super talented. Um, his junior tape at Kentucky was really impressive. Um, his senior year, he lost some players. He wasn't as good as he was his junior year. Um, but you see the traits. He's big. He's strong. He's fast. He's hyper competitive. Um, he can throw the ball all over the field. Um, and then he got some experience this year. And so, like I said in my press conference, it's, the NFL is, is, a, is a bear on young quarterbacks. And so that learning process is critical. And now you get a chance to step back, install a new system while evaluating what did you do well, what can we do better, uh, how do we improve everything about your game going into year two. A large part of that's going to be he's involved in OTAs and training camp as a starting quarterback. So the reps are going to go his way. Um, and so he's going to grow and he's going to mature and he's going to turn into a better player in year two and three and four. And like I guess hopefully uh, we're, we have a partnership together for a really long time. How quickly do you hope to have a staff in place? Um, you know, I'd like it to be done ideally before the combine, which is, which is plenty of time. Um, I'd like it to be done by then. But uh, it could be done sooner. It just depends on how these things move. But uh, we're, we are going to take our time. We're not just going to um, hire to hire. We're going to interview people. Um, we're going to get some ideas from around the league and talk to guys that have uh, maybe I'm not familiar with um, and see where, how we can build the best staff together. Um, there's going to be a combination of, of veteran coaches, some younger coaches, guys that I've worked with, and I know guys that maybe I don't. Uh, and so we're going to try to build the, the best diversity of, of thought, and I think that that's important on a coaching staff and the mixture of, of youth and experience is, is a big part of it too. So uh, it's, a, it's a process that I'm really kind of chomping to get started at, truthfully. More with Coach Callahan in a second. Remind you that SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can fan. Let's wrap up with this. I recently asked Amy Adams Strunk at this moment where the franchise is turning in a new direction, 
What is it important for Titans fans to know? So I ask you, what do you want them to know at this moment? About me? About anything. About what, anything. what would you, what do you want them to feel? What, what should they feel like is coming? I, I wish they could feel, I wish I could bottle up and sell what I felt when I was in the interview on Monday here. Uh, and what I mean by that is the, the energy from the people that, all, that I got to talk to, the excitement about what's to come. You, you could feel the, the newness of some of the things that were happening. Um, obviously, with Rand being here and Chad, and there's, there's just this, there's this kind of behind the scenes energy swell that I felt in the interview that said to me, this fits you, you gotta be here. And I, this was like the only place I wanted to go. Um, and that's because I felt that. And I, I hope, and, and I know they will eventually, but that the fans feel that, see that, um, that there's some really, I think some really awesome, awesome times ahead. And I, and I believe that in my core that we're set up to have a lot of success. And it's, um, even if it's not immediate, it's coming. And, um, I, again, I wish I could give it to them so they could feel what I feel in this moment, but um, I feel it, and, and I hope that they do too. And if not now, hopefully uh, sooner than later as they get to, get to see what, what our team's going to look like and, and how we continue to build it. Brian, we've been here at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park since August 25th, 1999. Uh, this is one of the great days that we've ever had in that 25-year period uh, to meet Allison, uh, to meet Nora, to meet Ronan, to hear you and to see your excitement. And as we have prepared for you to, to read all of these articles and study, I don't know that I've ever encountered a first-time head coach who was more ready for this opportunity and a fan base that was more ready to have you uh, lead the two-tone blue and uh, having everybody say tighten up as much as possible. Get ready for that. They're going to tell you that. I can't wait. They're going to tell you wait. that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And welcome. Thank you. Looking forward to working. All right.